guys, hope your week went well. Happy Friday, welcome back to the Q&A. Today's topic is moles. Um, I get many questions about moles. What are they, what causes them, uh, what can be done to prevent them, how, how can I get rid of them? Um, and so today I'm gonna answer all of those questions. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea, I am a dermatologist and my YouTube channel is um, lots of fun vlogs of my everyday life, as well as a lot of plant-based recipes. I um, follow a vegan diet, and I love to share the stuff that I come up with with you guys. Um, and then I largely have uh, skincare-focused content with skincare Q&As centered around uh, frequently asked questions with regards to skin and skincare and skincare products. So if that type of thing is of interest to you, then stick around and subscribe for all of the fun. The medical term for moles is benign melanocytic nevi, and benign melanocytic nevi are usually um, small and flat and uh, brown, usually dark brown, and they're symmetric, meaning that um, if you bisect them or draw a line in the middle of them, uh, they, were, they will more or less look the same on either side. They usually have fairly smooth contours, the edges of them are pretty smooth, the edges of them are pretty regular, the border is, is regular. Um, they don't have any, you know, funny kind of <laughs> arms and legs, they're just, you know, more or less symmetric and round, and oftentimes uniform, uniform in color. Um, they can be a little um, tan to light brown, sometimes slightly raised. Uh, there are different types of nevi. Junctional nevi are more flat. Intradermal nevi oftentimes are raised up and round um, and can be light tan to skin colored. And they're really, really common. You know, a lot of celebrities have them and um, Marilyn Monroe is probably most famous for her uh, benign melanocytic nevi, nevus on her face, uh, her beauty mark. Uh, so depending on where they are, they may be highly coveted, but some people are really, really bothered by them. Uh, it's, it's all up to the individual who has them. Uh, <laughs> As far as why nevi occur, we don't entirely know all of the details of it, but nevi are um, kind of a little tiny nest of, of cells within the skin. And they start out really, really small, usually when we're born, such that we can't see them on our skin with our eyes. Um, it's just a small little nest of, of different cells called nevus cells. And as we get a little bit older, usually around the age of four, they, you know, they've grown such that we can now see them um, as a surface mark on the skin or, or an ebus. They're small and they should stay small. They're usually about five millimeters um, in diameter. And like I said, they're symmetric, um, they have even borders. Everyone wants to know what they can do to prevent them from getting more. I think if you have several of these, you're worried that you're going to get more and you want to do something to, to prevent them. But in reality, you really can do nothing to prevent them. They're kind of part of who you are. They're part of your, your biology and your skin. Your skin architecture has already been set up to make them. Um, so there's nothing that you can do to prevent them, unfortunately. And nevi can change throughout our lifetime. They can become raised up a little bit. Um, they can change color a little bit. Um, they can evolve. They have a life of their own. Um, as I said, there is nothing that can be done to prevent them. You're sort of set up with them to, from the get-go. They're part of your biology. But it is very important that you pay careful attention to them. They, um, like I said, they're small. Um, and they usually are, you know, are less than five millimeters. Um, there are some that are larger, and those are referred to as atypical nevi. There are some that can appear more irregular, um, and those are referred to as atypical nevi again. Uh, but for the most part, they're very small, and it's important for you to pay careful attention to them should any, um, any striking changes develop. And by changes, this is what I mean. These are the things that you want to be looking for. They kind of fall into this A, B, C, D, E category. A being asymmetry, um, meaning, like I said, if you draw a line down the center of the mole, and it's not the same on both sides, uh, whereas it was before as it should have been, uh, that's something new that you want to pay attention to and bring to the attention of your treating healthcare provider. And the other thing you want to pay attention to is just make sure the border is relatively even and, and um, you know that uh, and what I mean by that is that there is no um, kind of uh, almost like fingers 
pointing out of some ends of it, that would be an unusual change that you would also want to bring to the um, attention of your treating healthcare provider. C is for color. Um, you know, nevi can change color. They can become lighter with time. They can become darker with time. But you, you want to pay attention to the color. Um, particularly, you want to pay attention to if there is any development of black coloration um, uh, or any, any little dot within the mole that is somehow new. Um, and then the other thing is diameter. You know, like I said, they should stay quite small. If all of a sudden it, mat it grows and, and becomes quite large, that is obviously something that you want to pay attention to. And then over the years, they've added E to the ABCDs of things that you want to pay attention to with your moles. And E can stand for either elevation. So, you know, if, if all of a sudden one part of the mole becomes um, elevated, uh, that may be something of concern. But kind of a more bigger picture E. Um, e thing to look for, I suppose, is just evolution overall. Like, you know, you had this mole your entire life. It was otherwise pretty stable and wasn't doing anything. And over the past year, it has started looking significantly different pretty quickly. That is obviously something that you want to bring to the attention of your treating healthcare provider, okay? Um, you know, don't lose sleep over these things. So don't, you know, stare at your moles constantly 24 seven. The more you look at it, the more likely it is for you to think that it's changing. Um, a good idea is, um, you know, maybe every every six months to look at your moles, at, you know, at, if you're just a general, for just a general audience. If you're somebody who has a prior history of a melanoma or skin cancer, or you have a family history of, of one, you know, your doctor may have advised you to do your skin checks more frequently. Um, but in general, you know, taking a peek at all of your skin, checking out your moles, um, you know, every six months, just a little check-in is a really um, important measure just to keep track of these things, make sure nothing suspicious is changing, and should it occur, you bring it to the attention of your treating healthcare provider. The other change that, you know, you can also, that would also be worrisome is um, should, the, should the spot suddenly become symptomatic, meaning all of a sudden it's like really, really itchy for some unexplained reason, all of a sudden it's bleeding and you don't know why, um, all of a sudden it's like oozing stuff or ulcerated, those are all changes that you definitely want to bring to the attention of your treating healthcare provider because for the most part, um, benign melanocytic nevi, they stay there and they don't really do too much. They're benign, okay? Um, nothing really to worry about. But rarely, um, melanoma can develop within a um, melanocytic nevus. So that would be what you're looking for as far as changes in your moles. So always, always pay attention to that. And then if anything new pops up on your skin that looks like a mole or kind of a funny mole, that is also something else to bring to the attention of your healthcare provider, um, for sure. I mean, there are many uh, brown spots on the body that can occur and occur as we get wiser that are completely benign. I've talked about several of them in my prior Q&As. There's something called a seborrheic keratosis. There's something called an acrocordon or a skin tag. There's something called dermatosis papulosis nigricans, which is, you know, kind of a type of a seborrheic keratosis on the cheeks of, uh, of um, African Americans predominantly. Uh, these are all completely benign nuisance for the individual lesions, but not dangerous, okay? But definitely bring them to the, to the attention of your healthcare provider just to make sure that they are benign. Um, because rarely um, melanomas can occur in, in these moles. Like I said, however, there's nothing that you can do to prevent them from coming out. You're kind of set up architecturally that way. For the most part, they start appearing at the, around the age of four. Um, so, you know, if you have a young child who developed a small mole, is developing small moles around the age of four, of course, have your pediatrician take a look at them. But do know that's kind of when they start appearing. Some moles are apparent at birth. They're called congenital nevi. A congenital nevus oftentimes will have hair, a, a, a terminal hair growing in it, um, or it will, will be hair, a hairy mole. And, uh, you know, from a cosmetic perspective, that can be really bothersome to the individual who has it, but those are, those for the most part are completely benign so long as they're small, okay? But definitely bring those to the attention of your, your child's healthcare provider as well, any moles that the child was born with. Oftentimes they, they are identified um, in, the, in the nursery and the newborn checks. 
Um, but bring them to the attention of the pediatrician and it's always a good idea to have those checked out um, just to be on the safe side, make sure that um, the size is appropriate and uh, just to keep an eye on them for sure. But, you know, it's not uncommon for somebody to have a congenital nevus on their face that will have a, ter a terminal hair throughout it. And while that's cosmetically really bothersome to the individual who has it, it's actually a pretty reassuring sign that it's a, con a benign congenital nevus. Um, but uh, that, that's a feature that they often, that they often have. I get many questions. What can be done um, at home to get rid of them? Are there any creams to lighten them? Anything to uh, get uh, any of those mole removers that you would recommend? And I say no. The only thing that you should be doing is paying attention to them episodically through a skin, a self skin exam, and making sure they're not changing drastically. Um, but don't try and treat them yourself, okay? Um, because a, you really can't, all right? Um, they're little nests of, of cells within your body. They're part of, of your architectural makeup of your skin. And there's not a cream or a at-home intervention that can take that away from you, okay? It's, it's, it's almost like saying, is there a cream that will get rid of my nose? Okay, I mean it really is. It really is a part of your part of your skin anatomy at this point. Okay, you can't change it with a cream or any kind of intervention at home. They sell these like caustic um, compounds that you can put on, you know, to put on them, and I would caution you not to do that. Um, you know, there are reports in the medical literature of people getting terrible, terrible chemical burns from these things. Um, they can have very, you know, irritating substances in them. But importantly, they can really, really mess up the appearance of the mole and make it look really scary, okay, and really scary to the, the clinician. So say you use one of these things, you can really, quote, muck it up quite a bit um, and make the mole look really, really alarming. And so then the clinician, if they're seeing it for the first time, is sort of obligated to biopsy it um, and, and sometimes because it looks bizarre based on the irritation that you've caused to it, okay? And sometimes that irritation can bring inflammation into the skin that even alters the way the mole looks in the biopsy, okay? And so you start to get into a slippery slope of an what's called an irritated mole um, and it just, it just complicates your life, okay? And you know, don't, so don't go down that rabbit hole of trying to get rid of these yourself. But otherwise benign melanocytic nevi do not need to come off and it's considered cosmetic to remove them so you have to pay for that out of pocket. There are two kind of ways to go about removing them. The first is nevi that are slightly raised up can be approached with a tool called a, an electrodesiccator and they can kind of be sculpted flat, okay? But the problem with doing that approach is that a portion of the mole, um, that nest of cells, is still within your skin, okay? It's still part of who you are, it's still there, okay? And so there's about a 50% chance that that um, mole will uh, repigment and you'll still have a brown spot there, okay? So um, for some people that's fine, you know, they'd rather just have the mole diminish, um, they're bothered by it just being raised up, um, and so they wanna try that. It's, um, you know, oftentimes a more affordable approach, um, and so many providers will do that. Um, the other thing though to do, um, the way to get rid of, to have them removed, is to actually excise them. So the um, dermatologist actually cuts them out um, so that that little nest is, is surgically removed, that little nest of cells is surgically removed. They then have to send it to the pathologist to make sure that they got the nest of cells out and that they all looked okay. Um, so that can be quite expensive. And then the other thing about that is that, um, you know, you're, you're trading off the mole for a tiny, tiny little scar, okay? Uh, because uh, after you have an excision, after it's, after it's excised, 
dermatologist has to put a little stitch in to close it up, or a plastic surgeon can, does this also, has to, oftentimes has to put a little tiny stitch in to close it up, um, and that can heal with a scar. A lot of times these scars fade, and people are really happy with the results and are elated and say it's worth worth the money. So it's all you know up to you as to how much they bother you and what you're willing to kind of risk, what you're willing to kind of trade off. Um, a small scar versus the mole, or um, you know, uh, a, a small flat brown spot. It's kind of up to you to think about what what you're w willing to trade off and go through. Um, don't lose sleep over them. Uh, pay attention to them, and you know, know your body. And you, you know, should anything new arise or change, as I've mentioned here, any of those changes arise, bring them to the attention of your healthcare provider. Okay, don't hesitate to, because you know, you don't want to lose sleep worrying about uncertainty. Okay, the uncertainty of if a mole is suspicious or worrisome best to just have it checked out, you know, not, not anything, not anything to continue to lose sleep over. Sleep is really important to your, to your overall health and well-being. And so the last thing you want to be doing is sacrificing that in, in, in the vein of uncertainty. So don't, don't torment yourself. Just go and have it checked out. You'll be happy you did. And don't, don't worry about what, what the provider's gonna think about you. The provider doesn't wanna miss a melanoma, so they're happy that you brought it in. But a lot of times melanomas that are diagnosed early are diagnosed early because the patient walked in and said, hey, check this out, it bothers me. And, and the dermatologist listens, or the healthcare provider listens, and it's worked up appropriately, and it's caught early. So that is another reason to pay careful attention to your moles and all you know brown spots, and don't hesitate to bring them to the attention of your healthcare provider. Better to be safe than sorry, and better to not lose sleep uh, worrying about these things, okay? Um, so I hope that helped answer all of your questions about moles. Um, I hope this video is helpful. I know moles can be really confusing, and um, you know they scare people. Um, so hopefully I answered all of your questions. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.